The Adhanada Protective Verses Kinh Asanangsi Diga Nikaya The Long Discourses The Adhanada Protective Verses Atanatiya Sutta The First Recitation Section So I have heard At one time the Buddha was staying near Rajagaya, on the Vulture's Peak Mountain. Then, late at night, the four great kings with large armies of spirits, fairies, goblins, and dragons set guards, troops, and wards at the four quarters and then, lighting up the entire Vulture's Peak with their beauty, went up to the Buddha, bowed, and sat down to one side. Before sitting down to one side, some spirits bowed, some exchanged greetings and polite conversation, some held up their joined palms toward the Buddha, some announced their name and clan, while some kept silent. Seated to one side, the great king Vesavana said to the Buddha, Sir, some high spirits have confidence in the Buddha, some do not. Some middling spirits have confidence in the Buddha, some do not. Some low spirits have confidence in the Buddha, some do not. But mostly the spirits don't have confidence in the Buddha. Why is that? Because the Buddha teaches them to refrain from killing living creatures, stealing, lying, sexual misconduct, and drinking alcohol. But mostly they don't refrain from such things. They don't like that or approve of it. Sir, there are disciples of the Buddha who frequent remote lodgings in the wilderness and the forest that are quiet and still, far from the matting crowd, remote from human settlements, and fit for retreat. There dwell high spirits who have no confidence in the Buddha's dispensation. To give them confidence, may the Buddha please learn the Atanatiya protection for the guarding, protection, safety, and comfort of the monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen. The Buddha consented in silence. Then, knowing that the Buddha had consented, on that occasion great King Vesavana recited the Atanatiya protection. Hail Vipa Si, the glorious seer. Hail Siki, compassionate for all beings. Hail Vesabu, cleansed and austere. Hail Kakusinda, crusher of Mara's army. Hail Kanagamana, the accomplished Brahmin. Hail Kasapa, freed in every way. Hail Anjirasa, the glorious Sakyan. He taught this Dhamma that dispels all suffering. Those in the world who are extinguished, truly discerning, not backbiters, such people being great of heart and rid of naivety. Revere that Gautama, he who is helpful to gods and humans, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, great of heart and rid of naivety. Where rises the sun, Aditi's child, the great circle, who in his rising dispels the night. And of whom, when sun has risen, it's said to be the day, there is a deep lake and ocean, where water flows. So they know that in that place there is an ocean where waters flow. From here that is the eastern quarter, so the people say. That quarter is warded by a great king, glorious, the lord of the fairies. His name is Dhatarada. He delights in song and dance, honored by the fairies. And he has many mighty sons all of one name, so I've heard. Eighty, and ten, and one, all of them named Inda. After seeing the Awakened One, the Buddha, kinsman of the Sun, they revere him from afar, the one great of heart and rid of naivety. Homage to you, O Thoroughbred! Homage to you, Supreme among men! You've seen us with clarity and kindness. The non-humans bow to you. We've been asked many a time. Do you bow to Gautama the victor? And so we ought to declare. We bow to Gautama the victor, accomplished in knowledge and conduct. We bow to Gautama the awakened. It's where the departed go, they say, who are dividers and backbiters, killers and hunters, bandits and frauds. From here that is the southern quarter, so the people say. 
That quarter is warded by a great king, glorious, the lord of the goblins, his name is Varula. He delights in song and dance, honored by the goblins. And he has many mighty sons all of one name, so I've heard. Eighty, and ten, and one, all of them named Inda. After seeing the awakened one, the Buddha, kinsman of the sun, they revere him from afar, the one great of heart and rid of naivety. Homage to you, O thoroughbred. Homage to you, supreme among men. You've seen us with clarity and kindness. The non-humans bow to you. We've been asked many a time. Do you bow to Gautama the victor? And so we ought to declare, we bow to Gautama the victor, accomplished in knowledge and conduct. We bow to Gautama the Awaken. Where sets the sun, Aditi's child, the great circle? Who in his setting closes the day, and of whom, when sun has set, it's said to be the night, there is a deep lake and ocean, where water flows. So they know that in that place there is an ocean where waters flow. From here that is the western quarter, so the people say, that quarter is warded by a great king, glorious. The lord of the dragons, his name is Virupaka. He delights in song and dance, honored by the dragons. And he has many mighty sons all of one name, so I've heard. Eighty, and ten, and one, all of them named Inda. After seeing the awakened one, the Buddha, kinsman of the sun, they revere him from afar, the one great of heart and rid of naivety. Homage to you, O thoroughbred. Homage to you, supreme among men. You've seen us with clarity and kindness. The non-humans bow to you. We've been asked many a time. Do you bow to Gautama the victor? And so we ought to declare, we bow to Gautama the victor. Accomplished in knowledge and conduct. We bow to Gautama the Awaken. Where lovely Uttarakuru is, and the beautiful Mount Meru, humans born there are unselfish, not possessive. They do not sow the seed, nor do they draw the plow. The rice eaten by people ripens in untilled soil, free of powder or husk, pure, fragrant, with only the rice grain. They eat that food. After cooking it in a parrot's beak, having prepared a cow with hooves uncloven, they are drawn about from place to place. Having prepared a beast with hooves uncloven, they are drawn about from place to place. Having prepared a woman-drawn carriage, they are drawn about from place to place. Having prepared a man-drawn carriage, they're drawn about from place to place. Having prepared a girl-drawn carriage, they're drawn about from place to place. Having prepared a boy-drawn carriage, they're drawn about from place to place. Having ascended their vehicle, that king's servants tour about in every quarter, provided with vehicles, elephant, horse, and divine. And there are mansions and palanquins. For that great and glorious king. And he has cities, too, well built in the sky. Adanata, Kusanata, Parakusanata, Natasuriya, and Parakasidanata. To the north is Kapavanta. And Janaha lies beyond. And there's Navanavutia, Ambara Ambaravatiya, and the royal capital named Alakamanda. The great king Kuvera, dear sir, has a capital named Vasana which is why the great king is called, Vesavana. These each individually inform the king. Tatola, Tatala, Tatodala, Oyazi, Tehazi, Tatoyazi, Sura, Raja, Aritha, and Nemi. There is a lake there too named Durrani, from whence the clouds rain down, and the rains disperse. There is a hall there too named Bhagalavati, where the spirits frequent. There the trees are ever in fruit, with many different flocks of birds. Peacocks and herons call out there, and the sweet cuckoos too. 
One bird cries out, live, live. Another, lift up your heart. There are cocks and kookaburras, and in the wood the lotus crane. The parrots and mina cry out there, and the little stick boy, birds. Kuvera's pond of rushes is lovely all the time. From here that is the northern quarter, so the people say. That quarter is warded by a great king, glorious. The Lord of Spirits, his name is, Kuvera. He delights in song and dance, honored by the spirits. And he has many mighty sons all of one name, so I've heard. Eighty, and ten, and one, all of them named Inda. After seeing the awakened one, the Buddha, kinsman of the sun, they revere him from afar, the one great of heart and rid of naivety. Homage to you, O thoroughbred. Homage to you, supreme among men. You've seen us with clarity and kindness. The non-humans bow to you. We've been asked many a time, do you bow to Gautama the victor? And so we ought to declare, we bow to Gautama the victor. Accomplished in knowledge and conduct. We bow to Gautama the awaken. This, dear sir, is the Atanatiya protection for the guarding, protection, safety, and comfort of the monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen. The monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen should learn this Atanatiya protection well, and completely memorize it, if anyone who does so is approached while walking, standing, sitting, or lying down by any non-human being with malicious intent including males, females, boys, girls, ministers, counselors, and servants among the spirits, fairies, goblins, and dragons, that non-human will receive no homage or respect in any village or town, and they will receive no ground or dwelling in my capital of Alakamanda, nor will they get to go to the conference of the spirits. In addition, the non-humans would not give or take them in marriage. They'd heap personal abuse on them, drop an empty bowl on their head, and even split their head into seven pieces. For there are, dear sir, non-humans who are fierce, cruel, and violent. They don't obey the great kings or their men or their men's men. They're said to be rebelling against the great kings. They're just like the bandits in the king of Magadha's realm who don't obey the king, his men, or his men's men, and are said to be rebelling against the king. If any non-human being with malicious intent, including males, females, boys, girls, ministers, counselors, and servants among the spirits, fairies, goblins, and dragons, approaches a monk, nun, layman, or laywoman while walking, standing, sitting, or lying down, one ought to yell, cry, and scream to the spirits, great spirits, generals, great generals, this spirit's got me, this spirit's entered me, this spirit's annoying me, this spirit's harassing me, this spirit's hurting me, this spirit's harming me, this spirit won't let me go. To what spirits, great spirits, generals, great generals? Inda, Soma, and Varuna, Bharadvaja, Pajapati, Kandana and Kamasetha, Kinagandu and Nyandu, Panada and Opamanya, and Matali. The God's Charioteer, Chittasena the Fairy, and the Kings Nala and Janasaba, Satagira, Himavada, Panaka, Karatiya, and Gula, Sivaka and Mukalinda, Vesamita, Ugandara, Gopala, Suparoda, Hiri, Neti, and Mandya, Pankalakanda, Alavaka, Pajuna, Sumana, Sumuka, Dadimuka, Mani, Manavera, Diga, together with Sarasaka, this, dear sir, is the Atanatiya protection for the guarding, protection, safety, and comfort of the monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen. Well, now, dear sir, I must go. I have many duties, and much to do.
Please, great kings, go at your convenience. Then the four great kings got up from their seats, bowed, and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on their right side, before vanishing right there. And before the other spirits present vanished, some bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on their right side, some exchanged greetings and polite conversation, some held up their joined palms toward the Buddha, some announced their name and clan, while some kept silent. The first recitation section is finished. The second recitation section. Then, when the night had passed, the Buddha told the mendicants all that had happened, repeating all the verses spoken. Then he added, Mendicants, learn the Atanatiya protection. Memorize the Atanatiya protection. Remember the Atanatiya protection. The Atanatiya protection is beneficial, and is for the guarding, protection, safety, and comfort of the monks, nuns, laymen, and laywomen. That is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, the mendicants were happy with what the Buddha said.